Hey guys, Michael here, Southern Indiana Sawmill. I have a special project that I want to try to do today, and this one involves setting up a vacuum chucking system for the lathe in the wood shop. Let me show you what I got. I got a big old box of parts right here to help me do this. So let's lay these things out and I will explain to you the process by which I'm going to set up this vacuum system, all of the things that are required to make it work. And uh, I'm gonna do this as I go. There's nothing pre-planned here necessarily in recording this video. So hopefully at the end of the day, all of this works. Might be a little trial and error. Let's get to it. So this is a bunch of fittings, as you can see, that I'm going to use to set up the vacuum system. Now, they do make and sell kits that essentially have all of these parts in them, but it's a much smaller diameter than what I'm trying to accomplish here. And the reason for that is because I'll show you later, the vacuum pump I'm using is a good size vacuum pump and I want to be able to use my vacuum system in the future to plumb it up so that I can use it in a multifaceted way for clamping and fixturing other things. And so I'm going full big bore on this um, I want to show you some of these components. So this is a, a custom piece. I want to show it to you up close. This is made by Robust. Robust Tools, of course. Uh, anyone that knows lathes knows the great American company Robust. I do have a Powermatic, but Robust is pretty awesome. Um, and this fits in the hand wheel end of my Powermatic. It's got a 5 8 end on there, and these O-rings essentially form a seal when you push it in. Uh, into the solid bore shaft through the Powermatic. It's got a quarter inch NPT fitting on the end. Um, it appears to be well made. There's one thing about it I'm not sure about and it's this. See I can easily pull the bearing end out of that and I just don't know if I'm going to be able to produce a vacuum uh, with that being like that. Anyhow as you can see like that slides in and out fairly easily and I don't know if I'm going to have to put some silicone or super glue or what that would take to get that sealed in there but we're gonna see if it does produce a vacuum this thing is a little over a hundred dollars I think it's like a hundred and nine dollars on their website so it's pretty pricey um, for what it is but we'll see if that works uh, there are other options if this does not work but I will be thrilled to death if and when it does everything else that I'm using here is more or less one inch fittings um, and then I've got other smaller ones of course these are quarter inch and so I have adapters so this is a one inch on the outside to quarter inch so that I can put in this vacuum gauge by the way all of these parts that I'm showing you well not all of them most of them came from Amazon because some of these fittings are simply not at my small town local hardware store but if I can I always support my local folks so some of these did come from my local hardware store this elbow fitting uh, this piece right here came from my local hardware store and the PVC fittings um, the PVC fittings are to adapt down the vacuum hose so let me show you the vacuum hose this is the vacuum hose this was also purchased on Amazon um, with a vacuum hose you definitely need a strong reinforced non-collapsible hose. I don't know where I would even find something like this in town. Uh, you can buy vacuum hose at the local hardware store. Uh, it might work. I wanted to make sure I had something uh, that would not collapse and had some flexibility. And so I found this on Amazon. Uh, this is one and three quarter inch inner diameter. This is one inch inner diameter. Um, it would be impossible really well maybe not impossible but it, it would be not the best to try to hook this huge hose directly up to the lathe and so I did the smaller hose and we're going to adapt it down uh, with this system local hardware parts stores this end fit in there this end obviously fits in there and this hose did come with these clamps which was pretty nice now don't don't, don't ask me why but Obviously the hose is red, white, and blue, but it's made in China, so <laughs> you can explain that one to me later. Let's go over to the bench and start assembling all of these pipe fittings together. So what we have here is kind of three separate uh, fittings or things that we got to assemble here. The first is this entire body, 
Um, again, you can buy a kit like this online. It's just not going to have the one inch diameter fittings like mine has. Um, again, I'm going for maximum vacuum uh, delivery here. And so I have them laid out how they need to be assembled. The second is, here's the adapter that's going to go in the, uh, the hand wheel of the lathe and then all of the fittings. You've got a little reducer there um, and then everything to make that happen and then the PVC fittings to get those vacuum hoses together. What I have noticed is that this fitting is actually quite large for what I'm going to try to put in there. And since this is for a lathe and I do have one, I'm going to take this piece over to the lathe and I'm just going to sort of smooth this or sort of shrink this down a little bit so that this will fit in there still snug. But uh, right now I'm not sure I would ever get that on there. So let's go do that quick. There we go. We can make that work. Good deal. So on my CNC, which is a Laguna brand by the way, uh, not trying to promote or advertise, it just is what it is. Um, when I very first got my machine, the vacuum on my machine worked great for like the first month or two that I had it. And then while it was still under warranty, the vacuum on the, the vacuum pump on my machine quit working. I had called tech support, we tried to figure it out together, we did all sorts of tests on it, and ultimately what they did was just swap me out with a brand new vacuum under warranty, which was pretty sweet. Now this left me with a vacuum that didn't work, but I thought, man, there's got to be some value in this thing. So I held on to it for uh, basically six years, and in my mind I never could figure out why this thing didn't work, because it was getting power, the solenoid was getting power, it sounded like it wanted to run, but I just got, could not figure it out. So I decided in the last couple of weeks I was going to take this motor apart, take the fan system apart that uh, draws the vacuum inside of the motor. Lo and behold, I found that a mouse had crawled in the exhaust and uh, blocked the fans from spinning. And so once I went in, took it apart, cleaned everything out, plugged it into a new switch, voila, everything all of a sudden works. So that was pretty sweet. So now I have two functioning pumps, which left me with a lot of options. I could either use... Uh, I could either upgrade my CNC to be a two-pump system, which is something that they do with Laguna, or I could have a whole other vacuum set up in my shop that I could use for the lathe, I could use it for doing future uh, like vacuum bag forming parts, things like that, or even use it for holding fast work in various fixtures and whatnot. So it comes in handy in a lot of ways. Let me show you the pump so that you can see what I'm working with here. This is it. So what you have here is a this is an air filter system. This is where the vacuum hose is going to get plugged into. This is a relief valve on the bottom for when you're pulling so much suction so that it doesn't collapse in on itself. There's the motor and then you got the big fan, of course, or the big spinning fan assemblies that are in there that draw the vacuum and then you have your exhaust port. This is where the mousey crawled in. It was uh, right down in there and peed and did all kinds of stuff in there and blocked the, the, the wheels from spinning. But this is the vacuum. Um, I am thinking, I want to say this is like a two and a half horse, something like that. So quite a lot of draw. I mean, this is, uh, this is the vacuum pump that Laguna uses on their 4x4 Swift machine. And sometimes they'll even use two. They, they usually use two on their 4x8 machines, but it's strong enough to pull parts through MDF. So it should be more than sufficient, I would hope, for this lathe. So what I have to do now is take my big fat hose right here 
red, white, and blue Chinese hose. <laughs> and I need to get it on that fitting right there. And then what we're going to do is this assembly is going to go up against that wall. And then this hose has got to get hooked up onto there. So a few more connections to be made. I also want to explain this real quick to you so that we're all on the same page as far as how this actually works. So believe it or not, one of the things that kind of baffled me about when I started setting all of this up, because again, I've been using the Venturi system, is why have an assembly like this? And again, for the sake of thoroughness and for those of you that have maybe searched YouTube and have not found videos that have given you sufficient answers, hopefully this will help clear it up a little bit. So you'll notice that there's this relief valve on the side. And then you've got this port on the bottom and you've got this port on the side. Well, what is happening here? Well, the port on the bottom, is it comes from your vacuum pump, okay? So think of the vacuum pump drawing air in down here. Now, if you were to turn your vacuum pump on and you did not have a relief valve, in other words, you said, I don't understand what's going on here. Now, the reason I didn't understand it is because I was thinking like an air compressor. If this is open, air is pouring out of here. But if it's a vacuum, air is trying to suck in, right? So if you have air sucking in through the bottom, like from the vacuum pump here, and you don't have any relief, you're going to get immediate vacuum on your chuck on your lathe. Now that would make it very, very hard to center and stabilize the piece that you're turning if you just have constant vacuum on all the time. And so what this relief valve allows you to do is to allow the air, the suction, to come through so that when you're putting your bowl on there, you have room to position it and then you lock it down and then you get 100% vacuum pulling through this line right here. So essentially that's what is happening and then of course you have your vacuum gauge to tell you how much vacuum you're drawing. Now in the hold fast system that I have, it says you have to have a minimum of 12 HG to have a safe holding uh, work area. Ultimately, you want to draw as much as possible. Like if you can get this sucker to 30 and get a perfect vacuum, that would be awesome. The one thing that I have yet to know <laughs> is with the strength of the vacuum that I have, uh, if I run the, the risk of collapsing bowls and things like that in the future. I don't think so because even the pump itself has a relief valve on it that should help with that. Um, but we'll see how this goes. Right now, uh, I just have really a couple more hookups uh, screwed onto the wall and we'll know if this is going to work or not. I have a bowl that we can test. All right. All right, I made this board here and I bracketed down the entire system. And I'm just going to try to screw it in. Oh, let's say right about there. Maybe it's a good spot. Basically now this is the line from the vacuum that is going to come up from underneath. So we're going to try to stick this on here. See how this goes. And like we said, this is the line that's going to go to the vacuum chuck. Last connection that needs to be made is to the adapter. Yeah, you can see, I'm kind of concerned about this. You can see even just fiddling around with it, that came out again. I, I just can't see how that's going to draw a vacuum if it's that loose, but that might be the weak link in the system and I may have to call Robust about that. Again, I'm just doing this on the fly, so um, I'm going to be right along with you when we plug this in and see if it works. So this is pretty simple. Let me show you a different angle. You see on the end of the Powermatic, there's this 5 8 hole that goes all the way through. And this end here simply plugs into that and it's just the O-rings. And then as this spins, you see that spins freely and those bearings allow it to spin in there. And 
that suction is drawn all the way through here. So we're going to put a vacuum chuck on there and get a bowl and see if it works. Now let's turn on our vacuum. Good suction coming out of there. I'm not going to try to get this too centered. I'm just going to try to put it on there. Oh boy, even without the valve, even without closing the valve, I can already feel suction. Well, it is holding it, but my vacuum gauge only shows three HPs of vacuum, so there is an issue here. It is holding it pretty firm, but the thing that's bothering me is my gauge is still only showing three HG. So, okay, so here's what's going on with it. It is drawing 3 HG's worth of vacuum. I think I know what's happening here. The relief valve on the vacuum motor itself is only allowing so much vacuum to be pulled through the system. That may be the issue. I may have made a miscalculation here and not understanding enough about vacuum pumps. Now, this is not all horrible and bad. At the end of the day, I'm still gonna have a, back, a backup vacuum pump, but I think I need to do a little bit more research, and I think I maybe need the opinions of some of you all out there, uh, few as there may be who actually watch a video about a vacuum system on a lathe, to help guide me in the right direction here. So, as I see it, any other vacuum system I'm going to use is going to cost me quite a bit more money to get into what I'm trying to do here. Um, but secondly, uh, there may be a different type of vacuum pump altogether that I need. My fittings are all one inch fittings now. So what does this mean? Do I have to backtrack and redo everything all together? I don't know. Um, there is a good amount of vacuum on that bowl that's holding it. Uh, there's a chance that the gauge is not reading 100% correct, but I doubt it. Um, and so, we'll see. Uh, we gotta figure this out. Right now, I am happy with the setup, I'm happy with the hookups, I'm happy with everything, except for the fact that I do not seem to be drawing enough vacuum. <laughs> and so, they're not all successes, but uh, all the principles and everything that have been taught on here are, I believe, accurate. Um, I just think I maybe have a vacuum pump issue here. So, that's about it. Um, let's wrap this one up. Uh, more videos to come as always in the future. Keep an eye out. As always, if you do like the content, if you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe and continue to follow along. Alright guys, God bless you all. Take care.